Okay, this is a continuation of section 2.2 from Mac 1105. We were in the process of discussing symmetries. We had just got gotten finished um, discussing even functions and the test that you're going to perform, which is to plug in a negative x for x. And if you get the original function, then the function is said to have y-axis, uh, it's said to have be an even function, which has y-axis symmetry. Even functions will always pass this particular test. And even functions always wrap around the y-axis. They have y-axis symmetry. Um, on the other hand, if you want to test whether a function is odd, an odd function, those have origin symmetry, you should be able to plug in negative x for x and end up getting the function, but with all the signs switched. An odd function always has origin symmetry. So it has matching images, which could be superimposed on each other by rotating at 180 degrees. Like for instance, if I was to break this right at the origin and rotate this blue piece 180 degrees, it would superimpose right on top of that. That's just a, you know, if you're good with visualizing things, just a way to define origin symmetry. The algebraic test, though, just in case, you know, in case you're not good visually, is that you should be able to plug in negative x for x and end up with the original function, all the same terms, all with the signs switched. This is a classic example of an odd function and the fact that it has origin symmetry. This is the function we started with. We plugged in negative x for x, but when cubing it, we got negative x cubed. So that is like the original function, but with the sign switched, which will always happen when you're doing a test for an odd function. When you're testing to see if something is an odd function, and from the result of that, you end up knowing that it has origin symmetry. Notice that here, when they plugged in negative x for x, the square made that negative go away because negative x times negative x is just x squared. So even though negative x was plugged in, we ended up with the same exact original function. That spells that it is an even function, which of course wraps around the y-axis. Okay, moving to... The next page, we're not doing any algebraic tests. We're just doing a visual check on what kind of symmetry it has. If it um, has y-axis symmetry, it'll have matching images on either side of the y-axis. If it has x-axis symmetry, it'll have matching images above and below the x-axis. And if it has origin symmetry, it will have a figure that when you twist it 180 degrees, it could superimpose. That's when it's good to have some sense of a visual ability to do things like that. Like, for instance, if you were to take this little hump, rotate it 180 degrees, it would then be upside down and it would superimpose right on top of that. If you were to break it right there at the origin and twist it, rotate it 180 degrees. So this one is said to have origin symmetry. This one, very easy to tell that if you creased your paper right here and then opened it like a book, you have matching images on either side of the y-axis and they're both above the x-axis. So this is said to have y-axis symmetry, while this picture has no symmetry. It doesn't have identical images on either side of the y-axis. It doesn't have identical images above and below the x-axis, so no x-axis symmetry, no y-axis symmetry, and it doesn't have images that can be superimposed upon each other that are in the first and the third quadrant or the second and fourth. So this has no symmetry. Okay, moving on to these examples, determine whether each of the following functions is odd, even, or neither. I was commenting that in some cases it's very easy to tell whether it's odd, even, or ne either, because when you're given a polynomial function, you can just look at the degree to tell if it's even, odd, or ne neither. If all the um, if all the terms have an odd power, which is the case in in um, example part A, see this has an odd power, that has an odd power. So this function is said to be odd. 
determine whether it is odd, even, or neither, did that, then decide whether the graph of the function has symmetry with respect to the y-axis, origin, or neither. Okay, so remember, y-axis symmetry, something that wraps around the y-axis will be an even function. Just theorems from the page before. Origin, um, when it has origin symmetry, it's because it is an odd function. Okay, so this is an odd function. This one's going to have origin symmetry. Again, you can put these in your calculator to further verify whether it truly has um, origin symmetry. This, notice that all the powers of these terms, not just one of them, but all the terms have even powers. Those are the power exponents you see on the variable. So this is an even function. What kind of symmetry does it have? This one had origin symmetry. This one would have y-axis symmetry. Okay, hey, then notice by the time you get to this one, it is a mixture. It has some um, terms that are even powers, some that are odd powers, so it's a mixture. You can't tell whether it's even or odd, so we say it's neither, and we will not, you know, be making any decisions, you know, regarding symmetry because it's neither. Okay, last um, few concepts here have to do with piecewise functions as well as um, how to find the difference quotient. So a piecewise function is just a function that comes in two or more pieces and it's defined according to its x value. So you have to decide when being asked to evaluate it, which is what these questions are about. This is saying plug in negative 2. Well, where do you plug in negative 2? Do you plug it into the top function or the bottom function? Well, x is what defines it. This says when x is less than 0. That's the same thing as saying when x is negative. Anything that's less than 0 is negative. So if x is negative, as it is right here, because this is, this is the same thing as f of x. They're telling you to use x equal to negative 2. So this is saying when x is negative, use this piece, 3x plus 5. So if I was going to do this, f of negative 2, I'm plugging in negative 2 for x, and I'm using this top piece, 3x plus 5 that top piece of the function. The bottom piece is that 4x plus 7. And I'm plugging in negative 2 right there, so that would be negative 6 plus 5, which is equal to negative 1. So the piecewise function evaluated at negative 2 is equal to negative 1. Evaluate the piecewise function at the given values of the independent variable. The independent variable is x. It's independent because it can change values. Part B, you are supposed to evaluate at 0. So look at the comment down here. It says when x is greater than 0, so when x is positive or 0, see, it's greater than or equal to 0, you're going to use this piece right here. So when doing f evaluated at 0, I would be using the piece 4x plus 7, but plugging this x value in. Let me move that. Okay, so this is with respect to the x value, just like this is with respect to the x value, plus 7. 4 times nothing is um, 0 plus 7 is 7, so 7 for that answer. And then in part C, it says evaluate the function at 3. So if you're evaluating the function at 3, again, we need to pick which piece we're going to substitute into. So this says when x is either greater than 0, our x value is greater than 0, that you should use the 4x plus 7 piece. Okay, we're plugging in 3 for x and evaluating. So this will be 12 
plus 7. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 7 is 19. Okay, so evaluation problems using a piecewise function. You'll also be asked to graph the piecewise function. So at this point, it would be great if you're catching on to the various shapes that are caused by either degrees on the x's or by symbols such as the absolute value symbol so that you know what shape you're trying to get due to each piece of this piecewise function. Okay, so now you see that they are making certain stipulations at the x value called 3. Here it says use this piece if your x value is less than 3. That means if your x values are on the left side of 3 and use and graph this function if you're on the side of x greater than 3. Greater than 3 means you're on the right side of 3. So why don't we put a wall right down the x value called 3. In this particular graph this would be 1, this would be 2, this would be 3. So coming right here I'm going to establish a wall Kind of messed it up a little bit there. A wall right at x equal to 3. So this wall at x equal to 3 divides up the right side, what you're going to do on the right side of that wall, and what you're going to do on the left side of the wall. If you're over here, you're going to be picking x values greater than 3. Anything over here, you're picking x values greater than 3. And if you're over here, if you're anywhere on this side of this line called x equal to 3, that means you're picking x values that are less than 3. Okay, now I, you know, I suggest that whenever you do these graphs, you start by picking the x value that's right on the wall, the wall that separates the right from the left. Always start by picking that value and then pick values over here to get the picture on the left and then pick values over here. Now, to only do one at a time, like I said, root your graph right at the wall by picking three. So like for instance, let's say we want to do the graph over on the left side where x values are less than three actually pick x values that are less than 3 at some point, but start with an, the actual x value of 3 so we can connect right into that wall. And we will either use an open circle. Now see how there, this is just less than 3, but there's no little equal sign. So when I connect to the wall by choosing the x value 3, I'm going to use an open circle. Whereas when I do the graph on the right side and I connect to the wall, I'm going to use a colored in circle because this has an equal sign. Okay, so right now what I'm doing is I'm trying to graph all of this. Notice that this is a parabola. Why is it a parabola? Because there's a square on the x. So I'm going to begin with f of x equal to one-half x squared. I'm going to start off with x equal to 3. And this is going to be 3 squared is 9, 9 over 2, or just 4.5, if that's more comfortable for you. So I'm going to go and graph 3 and 4.5 and you're going to see that this is going to hook my graph that's going to be drawn over here on the left side it's going to hook it or it's going to attach it to this wall i need to attach to this wall with an open circle because all the graph that i'm going to create over on this side in the x less than three area there's no little equal sign so let's see i'm going to go to three four point five three one two three four four there's five so 4.5 would be right there i'm going to hook in with an open circle at three 4.5 meaning that that point where it's attached to the wall is open because there's no little equal sign here then i'm going to actually pick x values that satisfy this knowing full well 
that they are going to create a parabolic shape. Why? Because the square is on the X. So let's now pick things that are 